Hi, I'm Miss Janet and I'm here at the Yellow Springs Library and I'm inviting students seven and up and to join us in doing a calming landscape. We're going to use some acrylic paints today. You're going to learn a little bit about paint and blending, about some different types of brushes, some different types of paper. And you can see behind me, I've done some samples here, just real simple fun things. Um, I call them calming landscapes. Uh, a lot of them have like autumn colors in them, but you could do it with any colors you want. We're just gonna have a little fun learning, uh, experimenting with paint and with color and some strokes and maybe with a different type of brush than what you have done in the, few, in the past. So supplies you'll need. You'll need some watercolor paper. This is what I would recommend you use. If you use different other kinds of paper um, with the acrylic or with watercolor paints, the paper will end up being really wavy. So you need a heavy watercolor paper. This one's Strathmore watercolor, and you can see it's, it's pretty stiff. Um, and so that's what I'm gonna be painting on now, and that's what these were painted on as well. And, or you can also use um, a canvas. This is just a simple wrapped inexpensive canvas, but a lot more expensive. Um, probably you can buy a, a pack of a pad of watercolor paper for just a little more than what um, the canvas might cost. You can also get canvas that's glued onto a board, a canvas board, and that can be inexpensive and a fun way. Maybe after you experiment and you come up with a design you really like, maybe you'll want to put it on a canvas or a canvas board to make it a little more permanent. So I'm going to show you some other things. You'll need a palette. It does not, this is a very inexpensive palette. It's probably less than two dollars at a craft store and usually they'll come with a clear lid that can fit on it. Um, but you can also just use like a big plastic lid like off of an oatmeal container or um, you could use a, a, a pan. You could use metal, you can use plastic, you could use glass. You want something kind of flat or if you have something with some indentations, these are kind of nice to put different colors in, but you're gonna need a place to put your paint on and then to add water and to do some color mixing. Um, you're gonna need some brushes. I'm gonna show you down here on, the, on my table where I'm working. I have a piece of old poster board behind me and that's kind of good because I can, you'll see I have lots of little splotches where I, with my paintbrush, I've dabbed the paint and also it keeps my table clean. Um, it's very easy to clean acrylic paint off of a table like this. Um, it's easy to clean it off your hands with soap and water. It's easy to clean the brushes. It's easy to clean the palette, but you will want to wear, as you can see, I have an apron on or an old shirt over your clothes or old clothes when you paint, because if you get acrylic paint on your clothing, it is hard to get out. And so because acrylic, the nature of acrylic is it has some latex, some like plasticky substance in it. And so that can get in the fibers of fabric. So wear some to protect your clothes or wear an old shirt when you, when you paint. Um, and you will want, you may want a pencil. I'm gonna do a little sketch before we get started. And the pencil that I'm using is a 3H, which is a very hard lead, which means when I draw with it, I'm gonna draw lightly, but it also does not lay down a dark line. Um, a, a B lead is a, is a soft lead, which lays down a lot of dark when you draw with it. An HB is relatively soft, but this 3H is, real, is a real hard lead. And so it, when I draw with it, it'll be very, very light. You'll also need some containers with water. I have a couple of them. I think it's good to have at least two because when one of the water starts getting cloudy or have some color in it, you may want the clear water to keep painting. Um, so, and also what we're gonna use, I'm just gonna use today, I'm gonna use these little inexpensive acrylic paints um, that come in bottles. And this actually was the clearance bottle and it was only 23 cents, which is super cheap. But even at regular price, they're usually not much more than a dollar, a dollar and a quarter. They also come in larger bottles like this. Um, and you can also use tube acrylic paints, which are a much more expensive, much higher quality paint. And the difference between something like this that's acrylic and an acrylic in a tube is, the one of the words for today is pigment. The pigment in the paint, which gives it its color, is a higher quality and more intense in the tube paint. So it comes out thick 
and you would put a dab of it on your palate and then you would add water. These already have water added to them, so they're much more diluted. And we're gonna add more water because we're gonna use these acrylics a little bit more like a watercolor to be a little translucent, which means the background shows through. Um, so the cheap paints are a good thing to start off experimenting and eventually you may wanna move on to get good quality watercolors or good quality acrylic paints that come in a tube. Um, I am, we're, we're going to be using today, usually when kids paint, they're given something that looks more like this, the little fine brushes, maybe they're a little thicker, but they're the, the kind of brush that comes to more of a point, and these are really good for doing detail, but today we're not going to do detail, we're going to do some, some more sweeping lines, and so this is the brush that I used on all of these paintings that you see behind me. It's, it's flat. Right now this is wet, but it's pretty soft. It's very soft and it's flexible. And that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for something. And it, you can see that it's wide. It's uh, three quarters of an inch maybe, somewhere between three quarters of an inch and inch. But the tip of it actually comes to a line. So you can actually still do some detail with, with that. You can make straight lines with that. This is a fun brush to experiment with. And I have a couple others that are similar in shape that are smaller as well. And all of these brushes came in a pack that probably had 10 or 12 brushes in it and only cost under $5. So these are very inexpensive brushes. You will see brushes that look like this, especially if they're wide, if they're good quality brushes could be very expensive. They could run anywhere from 10 or $12 up to about 50 or $60. And those would be high quality like uh, watercolor or oil painting brushes. Um, which have like natural bristles and things that different things about the brush that make them a much more expensive item. But these are cheap, they're fun, and you can actually still get some fun, get some nice art out of them. Um, so those are the brushes we're going to use if you want. If you have this at home, you could also use a sponge brush. You can do a lot of what we're doing because you see there the top of the sponge brush is a straight line just like with the other brush. Do a lot of the same things kind of playing around. You don't get as nice of a quality of a stroke with the sponges you do with the soft bristles, but this is also something you can use. So I'm gonna start off with my piece of watercolor paper. I'm gonna turn this down so you can see what I'm doing. And I am gonna draw um, a real pale circle here because I'm gonna put a pale yellow sun in the sky. I'm gonna use a completely different color scheme than what's on, up on the wall. I'm gonna kind of draw a light line for my top of my land here, my kind of a desert scene. And I am going to pencil in a cactus here. And it's gonna be real light um, here because I don't want the pencil lines to show up. You may not even be able to see it. Well, I'll hold it up here. Um, and we'll be putting that in. That'll be one of the last things we do is adding that cactus in. I'm giving it a, a thick stalk is the main part of the cactus, the main stalk. And I'm putting a couple arms on it here. So you're not going to see much, but there is a little bit of a round shape here. There's a little bit of a cactus penciled in there and kind of some, some strokes for the top of our land there. And I am going to start off with a little bit of water in my brush, getting a little water on my brush, having some paper towel to dab your brush in to get the excess water off of it. And then, um, you can dab it on the paper towel to get the excess water. I have some pale yellow. I put some yellow in my palette and a little bit of white. And I have a real pale yellow here. And I'm gonna start off with a little water on my brush in this paint, and I am just going to put a nice pale sun in the sky here. I'm going to put a dab more yellow in here, maybe. My yellow is kind of low. You can always, when these get low, you can add water to them and shake them up. And because it, as long as you don't want it to be real opaque. Opaque means when the, the background doesn't show through. When you want it to really cover solid and you want it to be solid color with no 
strokes showing and no background showing through, we call that opaque. But if you want it to be a little more like a watercolor, is translucent, which means it allows light through it and it allows you to see some of the background there. So I have my sun painted on there. I'm going to clean my brush out. And next I am going to do um, put a little bit of light blue in here in my palette. Not too much. This paint goes a long way, especially when you're using it with water like this. I just put a little bit of light blue in there. And I'm going to use the sponge brush just to show you you can do that. I'm going to put a little dab of white beside it too in case I want to do a little mixing with the light blue. And I am going to go around our sun here with the edge of my brush. And I'm going to give it, I'm going to make, I want my sky to be in this scene to be pretty pale. Nice light blue. All of my strokes are going to be from side to side, not continuous, to make them kind of give them a little bit of wave. But I want my um, sky to be this kind of horizontal movement across my page, not up and down. And I'm going alongside of my cactus here and in between the arms in the stalk of the cactus. I'm going to get a little water out of the brush and so a little more of the paint shows up. And then you can kind of have some fun. You can add, make it add a little more paint or you can make it thin. And then with, when it's thin, it shows a little, it looks a little, allows the watercolor paper to do, um, show a little more of the texture of the watercolor paper behind there. So hopefully you can see some of that at the end. We'll probably pick it up. I'm going to set that aside for right now, and I'm going to put some blue, some, I think we're going to go with purples and browns on the, on the ground here. And you know, in the desert, when the sun, put a little more purple here than I wanted to probably, um, when the sun shines onto the sand and the land, the hard ground, it can look all different kinds of colors depending on the amount of humidity that's in the air and just the shadows and everything and so even though like up here you see we have a lot of peaches and oranges and reds which look like sunset colors um, sunsets can also have like purples in them as well and so I'm going to go with a little different color scheme here just to show you how you can have some fun with um, trying out some different colors for what you're doing and I'm going to this is really bright here, but it's not going to be so bright when I'm done with it. I'm going to add a little water. And do have some fun mixing the paints and also seeing how the water adding, using the paint thicker or adding the water makes a difference. We're going to, going to try to put some different texture in here. I'm going to put a dab of white. So some of my purple can be lightened up a little. I think this is kind of fun to learn how to use a brush like this. Might be a little different experience for you and it's a really nice kind of fun brush to work with. You can, you can get a fine line like this if you use the tip. And you can go real wide and be real free. I'm going to grab some purple there, some white and some purple, mix that in a little. Just going to play around with this here. That's what I hope that you might be inspired to do is to try mixing some paints and seeing, using some water with it and seeing the different effects you can get doing that and the way the watercolor paint or the watercolor paper kind of feathers things out. I'm going to add some 
I'm going to mix some brown and some purple here too. And let's see what we get here. Make this down here a little bit darker. Just kind of play around with the colors. I'm going to clean this brush off a little. I'm going to go for some of this light purple here. And kind of try, see the flexibility in the brush gate, and it kind of allows you to do some fun stuff there. And I think I'm going to maybe kind of leave this like this. There we go. And I'm going to come up here right along the top, give it a little more def definition there. We could do that in here. When this, these acrylics dry, or if you were using watercolor, the same situation, you could come back over it with a thin brush and some paint that has a little more, that's not as watered down, and you could paint something on top of it, but you want to let it dry. And then you could also do pen and ink over it if you wanted to draw details. If you wanted to draw some little animals or some birds in the sky, you could do the same thing with painting. Um, I may do that at the end. We'll see here. I'm going to go ahead and work on, you see where my cactus is, is completely dry. And so I am going to add some green here to my palette. Let me get just a little bit of this green out. I don't want too much of this bright green. There we go, just a little bit. And then I have a more, a more muted green, kind of a, with a little bit of an olive cast to it. It's not real olive -y. I'm going to put a little bit of that in there. And I'm going to use one of these slightly smaller brushes here, but same type of shape of brush. And I'm going to, I'm going to mix a little bit of these two greens together. And I am going to put my cactus in here. Okay, and I'm going to you see here I can get a real pretty fine straight line with the edge of my brush and I can also get the thick line the edges of the water this because it was still kind of wet around the edges it's actually kind of making kind of an interesting little thing it almost looks like it could be the spikes on the cactus or even like little little flowers coming off of it you could go back and dab in some little colors on there and it would look like flowers you could go back with a, a tiny brush or with pen and ink when it dries and put um, cactus needles on it if you wanted to, or put a hole in it, maybe even with a little drawing of a little animal, because the animals get in these cactus and live like that. But I'm gonna leave that pretty much like that. And I'm gonna, I have a little bit of blue on this brush still. I'm gonna come up just a little closer here so there's no white at all around my cactus. And there, and if we wanted to, I wanted to show you this, we could take a little paper towel because this is still pretty wet. And you can pick up with watercolor or with a thin acrylic like this, you can actually pick up some of the paint off of it by using something like a paper towel and almost give it kind of a, a, pat, a effect of a cloud. You can, by picking up some of that's drying some, but you can see here 
um, I picked up some of the color from there and it almost looks like there's some clouds in the sky there. We could also do that a little bit with some white. We could have it do a similar effect by adding some white. I'm gonna come around the sun here a little bit with a little bit of blue. But there we go. I think that's pretty much what I'm gonna do with this for right now. If I want to, I'm gonna take this brush again, we can pick up a little paint and the paint's a little more, a little thicker here. We can, can add some definition if you want to here in the, in the landscape part of it. And there we go. I'm gonna bring this camera down close and let you see this picture that I painted. And I would love to see what you have painted. I would pick this up, but I think my paint's going to run. I'll kind of hold it up here. There we go. And we have our sun and our cactus. And if I hold it up, my cactus will run. So I'm not going to do that. But I would love to see, have you take a picture and bring it into the library or send it to my email. I would love to see your pictures. I hope you have some fun with the paint and with the brushes and having a little fun relaxing and doing an art project. I will see you next month with a whole new project. Okay.